from the wisdom of the feminine divine in honor of the wisdom of the masculine divine. The merging of what has been two energies coming into union. For the wisdom of the feminine divine and the wisdom of the masculine divine is when each one of you and we have come upon a time to birth ourselves anew. And so, from the feminine divine, we ask you to go deep within your hearts to a new resonance that is part of your being. It is time to birth this part of your being. Are you ready? You have given intent to be recognized. You have given intent to know more of your self-worth. And so as you reach deep within your heart, deep within your being, we ask you to align, center, balance. Feel the resonance of wholeness within you. And the wisdom of the feminine divine and the wisdom of the masculine divine unite. There is an alignment. The new resonance calibrates, strengthens. You bring this new resonance forward deep in your heart. Go mining for that energy deep within your being. Bring forth that within you which is in union, which is in peace, which is the birth. Ah. And the energy flows gently through you. It is your own truth. It is your own wholeness. If you could see yourself as I see you in this moment, there is a gossamer energy that you are bringing forth. It is a foundational structure of your own being in alignment. The recognition must begin with yourself. The energy of self-worth, it must begin within you. And as you recognize yourself, you will recognize others. And they recognize you, and you recognize others, and it continues again and again. And this part of your being that you bring forth from this moment on, you feel the energy of your feet, the gentle energy moving through the feet. For the calibration is according to your wisdom. The birth is this beautiful light that says, I am a new human. I am willing to evolve. I am a new expression of the I am. Feel the balance. Feel the strength within the feet. May you walk upon the planet with this new awareness within you, with this new birth, with this energy that calibrates, that is the wisdom of the feminine divine within you, honoring the wisdom of the masculine divine, and the masculine divine honors the wisdom of the feminine divine, and out comes the new resonance of the new human. Mm. 
Give yourself permission to be. Through the energy of your heart, through the channel of the heart, you are born anew. Another deep breath. This is the beginning, the new birth. Give yourselves time. Allow your consciousness to align and to continue to birth this resonance into your everyday life, to your next level of wholeness, to your next level of holiness. In the energy of love, we honor you. Together let us affirm, and so I am, and so I am. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. family before me is known and I will say it yet again that there is no mystery who sits here who may be listening eventually perhaps who may be reading it comes together in a timeless state which is not the reality that you share at this moment It's the reality that I have of a timeless place in a quantum state filled with the potentials of those I know who will hear and read this message. And so, although it may seem it is for you in the room, it is for all. But I wish to bring it home to you in the room in a special way, for I know where I sit with my partner. If I could take you back several thousand years, slowly as the time went backwards and the clock and the buildings would disappear, and everything would be reduced to dirt, the indigenous would show themselves. And if you took a look at what the indigenous were doing, they had two things that they emphasized. And those two things occupied all that was important to them. And the first was their ancestors, and the second was Gaia. The energies of the indigenous were focused on the land. Not just a land that would give them water or food, but the actual energy of the dirt of the earth. And you know of what I speak if you have studied their lives. And it is no different from the indigenous all over the world, for this was intuitive. The Gaia, that is the energy of what you would call the Mother Earth, was allied with humanity. In a society that was not near as complex as yours, the overwhelming energies were those of the alliance with the Earth and with those who had gone before. And I tell you this because the object of the lesson this day is how that alliance is still alive. And you may not see it as they did, but the alliance is still there. 
And it's there in ways that are mysterious to you, and I'm going to help clear them why they exist and how it works. So do not be shocked or surprised if I start at the molecular level of the human being. <laughs> I have to. For therein lies the mysteries. Here is the premise, dear ones. As goes consciousness, goes Gaia. That there is a partnership that is more than you think. The indigenous did not pray for rain. They did not pray for crops. They did not worship the deity of that which was untenable in their reality. They felt the planet and they knew it was part of them. Now you're missing that today. But it's still alive. It still works that way. Let us speak of DNA yet again. The molecule sits there, unique, unique to all things, for there is a complement of divinity in it that the animals do not have. There are certain animals that have so many things. There are even animals designed to reincarnate specific animals that do so for you and yet they do not have souls as you do they do not have the divine spark that you do their cycle is a cycle of love to support you I speak now of something that I rarely speak of and you should know this all of the systems of the planet revolve around you as support for the human being to make their lives easier and better as Gaia responds to what you give it if you love an animal you probably are aware the animal's life is short and I will tell you as I sit here on this stage if you believe this if you believe that the channeling is real then believe this those animals that you fall in love with come back to you. The very soul continues the love affair. And if you want to, it is there for you. And that is support, compassion of a system that honors that divinity inside a human. Did you know that? In your DNA, is a quantum attribute that we have discussed for many years. My partner spoke of it just yesterday. Science is starting to see it. Is it possible that the DNA molecule has quantum attributes that actually give information to the spin of quantum structure in the universe? And the answer is yes. And you could say that that's interesting. And you could admit that perhaps that there is in that field information. Well, that is what has been said. And now I wish to expand that picture for you. For DNA does not sit alone. It has a family. And in the human body, that family is over a hundred trillion strong. And that is to say that that would encompass the greatest portion of the pieces or molecules of DNA in one human being. And you have the puzzle before you that science has never even looked at. For they do not even see the need for communication between DNA molecules. They haven't seen the field yet. They haven't seen the structure yet. They haven't seen the shadows yet. <laughs> DNA has to work together in the human body 
for the intelligence or what we call the innate of the human body to function. So all DNA must work as one. From the top of your head to your toe, it must be one. And it is unique. There is no other human being on the planet that has yours. Therefore, you must acknowledge that there is something that must happen within you, the human being, that connects all of them together. Or you could not function. You could not function. There must be communication. This is where the genes are produced. This is where the information is. This is your higher self. This is the Akashic record. And it must all vibrate together, trillions of parts, as one. And so we'll say it to you for physicists to see, for them to understand, finally, that the human being has DNA which is in an entangled state. That is to say, it is one, and the parts are one. There is an attribute of physics which has not been seen or discussed yet, and I give it here for the first time, so you will understand a little bit more about how it works, but more than that, when it is discovered, you'll remember where you heard it. If you have multiple quantum fields around molecules, that means that they must overlap. And so the fields overlap one another. You already, as an engineer, my partner, know what happens when you have multiple overlapping magnetic fields. There's a magic that takes place that science does not understand called inductance. You see it as a human being when you look at the magnetic field of the sun, which is the heliosphere, interfering with the magnetic field of the earth, which is the magnetic grid, and you get the aurora borealis. <laughs> that is what happens when magnetic fields collide. You get sparks. And if you were then to take that and have not a magnetic field, but a quantum field around every molecule, I will tell you, you don't get sparks. You get a designer entangled state. Overlapping quantum fields is something that has not yet been studied, recognized, or measured. And when they do, they will see the mechanics of an, of an entangled state and what that then creates is an overall field which is larger around the human being. And this is what we want to talk about. Now you know how it is created. And what might be in that field around the human being that would be measured eight meters wide? And has it ever been seen? Yes, and you'll find it in your scriptures, the old ones, in Second Kings. For again we say it was Elisha who saw the master Elijah ascend of his own will and on the ground his field glowed, it illuminated and he left the planet in that fashion almost like a vehicle that took him, that he rode in. And Elisha named the vehicle. In Hebrew, which means to ride, became the Merkaba. And so you have a name for it, an ancient name. One that is recognized not only by the ancients in spiritual lands, but also to this day of those who see it with second sight. It is the quantum field of the human being. It is the Merkaba and it is filled with information. And the information that it is filled with seems to be non-structured to you, but it is. It is the matrix of the templates of the human being himself. And it is ready and waiting to be altered 
by another quantum field. And that field is called consciousness. Now I haven't mentioned Gaia yet, have I? All of this leading up to tell you something that I have only hinted at before and how it works. There sits the human being with all of this intact that you can't see that we just tell you about but that the ancients have claimed that the spiritual systems of old know about and the name that remains the Merkava inside this and around every single human being is a beautiful field which some have even called magic for in this field is your Akashic record your higher self for it echoes what's inside the DNA molecule itself and if you had quantum eyes you could look at a human and read who they were and who they used to be what their issues are and you would see what we would call the innate of the human being the intelligence of cellular structure and there are those in the room who have that sight and you would call them medical intuitives past life readers and more healers in this room depend upon this second sight and they see it around you as a human being and that's how that works it is not mystery it's not magic it's science and these are the tools we speak about I still haven't mentioned Gaia yet have I I'm getting there the innate of a human being is starting to have a bridge between you and it in a way that it's never had before let me explain again there are those in the room that practice something called kinesiology now kinesiology is a way to contact innate the human being as smart as you are sitting in the chair listening right now still is not smart enough to know what's going on in your own body <laughs> and we have said it before it's a mystery isn't it you can have a disease growing in your body right now and you're just smiling having no idea until it hurts isn't that odd and Nate knows it you might have to use the muscle testing in order to find out what you're allergic to or what is going on yes or no isn't it interesting that you have to go through that process human being to discover what is happening in your own body so you might say to yourself you imagine or perceive maybe something is missing and you'd be right there should be a bridge between all that information that is quantum that is there to be read and your consciousness and you'd be right and so the first thing I'm going to tell you that is changing in the new energy is the enhancement of the bridge to the innate and I sit next to someone through my partner who has a process that crosses the bridge new tools not gifts tools that you may have to pick up know about learn see the structure of the 3d around them so that you can literally read your own magnetic and quantum fields I said magnetic because it's there too it has been acknowledged that DNA also has a small magnetic field it has to because magnetics is part of quantumness there'll come a day when all of that will be far clearer especially to those physicists who are trying to create the process of entanglement it will always have a magnetic complement always 
haven't mentioned Gaia yet, have I? And here's where it gets good. Gaia cooperates with humanity. Gaia is always measuring as a group humanity. When there are only a few human beings on the planet and when they were in touch with Gaia, Gaia responded and so did your DNA in how well it worked. DNA is designed for very long life in the human body. DNA is designed for self-healing. DNA is designed so that the bridge between you and innate is always there. And that's not the way it is, is it? You've heard of those human beings of old who lived a great distance of years. Was that a misprint in scripture? No. What was it back then that might allow human beings to actually have more health, years of happiness than now? Was that accurate? Was that true? And I will tell you, it was. And here's why. For DNA and Gaia are so allied, the field around you and others, so allied with Gaia that you cooperate and shift according to one another. It's what the ancients knew. It is why they were one with the planet. And it's something that you are going to start discovering as well. Gaia takes its cue of the energy to create on the planet from the human consciousness and we have told you that for 22 years and it goes the other way for your DNA as a whole responds to something which is called the crystalline grid of the planet and that is to say the energy of humanity we've given you teachings about the crystalline grid before but you might say it creates a shell around the earth that is not seen that holds all of the energies of anyone who has ever lived on the planet and when you are born at your first breath the quantum field of your humanness looks at the crystalline grid and adjusts its efficiency for the energy of the planet that has been created. And the energy on the planet is filled with millenniums of war, old energy, fighting, machoism. And that is what it adjusts to. And whereas you might have a hundred percent DNA imprint and template when it gets here, it takes the first breath right now it's at 30 percent and that dear one is what is changing For the DNA is now starting to operate at a higher efficiency because there's a consciousness shift going on and you're seeing it first of course with the ones who are being born at their first breath they're at 35 <laughs> And that translates into a human being which is far more aware and conceptual at a far earlier age. And we have told you about that. And that is why your children are so unusual. <laughs> and you know they are. And those in the audience who have grandchildren are really seeing it. The kids are different. And you might say, well, it's too bad that we cannot do that ourselves. Well, you can for the energy of the planet is alert and ready to send the signal to the old soul who starts to understand that they can change their own fields through the templates that float in them through the processes and through the consciousnesses 
and through that which is compassion and intent and we have said that from the beginning so let me summarize this in simple words that are not that which are scientific go slow my partner make this succinct your DNA adjusts itself for what has happened on the earth when you're born and it's created a reality for you which you call human nature the earth changes the crystalline grid is moving the veil is lifting and your DNA is starting to respond it responds first in your children and they come in with a different concept than you did with a higher reactive reactive feeling toward the planet it is it is a higher efficiency you might say of consciousness than you have and you see it because they don't think in the same linear fashion you do and you as you sit there in the chair not caring how old chronologically you are have that ability to plug in to this that new energy and do I have to tell you what it means to have a more efficient DNA to have the bridge between the innate start to fill in that means that you will have more intuitive thought about what is wrong or right within your cellular structure some of you will discover different eating habits for the first time you'll realize be tuned in to a cellular structure it says if I will change this and this I'm gonna live longer habits perhaps that you've had you know they're not right for you will start to drop away because your cellular structure will start to help you to eliminate them and it never has before and one of them is overeating others are that which you put into your body which is inappropriate but which you're addicted to and you know what I mean and the process will allow you to live much longer you will see regeneration of cellular structure that will surprise you you'll heal faster and you know it you'll start to see a situation where you're less sick than you've ever been in your life and that doesn't make sense because now you're older and the wise powers in 3d will say well you're older you're gonna get sick more and you won't and you'll know that something is changing and so I guess what we're saying to you dear ones right here in the room is that you can have the same things that the youngsters have you will now awaken them in birth you in realization to a new energy on this planet that will allow you to live longer for your DNA is going to start cooperating in a more efficient way 35 percent perhaps even 40 old soul on its way to something which is far higher the prophet Elijah the master Christ the Buddha Paramahansa Yogananda and many more had DNA working at a hundred percent and all of them chose the way they wished to use it and you could see it in them and feel it in them the prophet Elijah chose to leave the planet through an ascended status of his own design and choosing that's how powerful it is the Christ decided to do the same thing in his own way for the reasons that made sense for those around him whose DNA was working poorly 
If you look at the masters, even the modern day ones, such as Paramahansa Yogananda, you study the cellular structure even in death was still there, <laughs> still working. Defies all science. It's DNA that is different. It's the innate in the human being that starts to awaken. You are more in touch with who you are. And that is the gift and the tool at the same time. The gift is the fact that it's happening in your lifetime, that you've created it. The tool must be picked up and used for it to be effective. And we've said that before. So let us end this message. What have you learned this day? There are energies within the human being that are catalysts to enlightenment and one of them is compassion and you felt it this day, did you not? Do the stories of those where you saw compassion, did you not? The 33, did you not? And it touched your heart. And what would you say was the energy in the room? And what color was it? And how thick was it? And you would say, well, it, it, it was no color at all. And I, we don't know. What do you mean thick, Kriya? Huh? You know it was thick. As you sat there in the chairs and it sat upon you. And you felt your heart squeezed a little bit. <laughs> and you had the empathy for the joy of those who were compassionate and had results. This is what I speak of. Invisible and yet profound is what you can create around you that will change lives in the room. Some of you have come for healing this weekend and I know this. And so at the end here I have waited to say this. This would be a very good time to receive it. There's an entourage here. There's compassion here. There's profundity of old souls here. This is a soup of opportunity, dear one. Why don't you claim it right now that you're going to rise from that chair of yours and the seed will be planted for the health that you've asked for. For the beginning of the healing that you've asked for. Spiritual organizations are filled with miracles, documented. Hospitals are seeing that which is a, a phenomenon that is, is not explainable. Spontaneous remission. <laughs> Suddenly the cellular structure does something which science cannot even believe. They snap into 100% for a moment and clean the body of disease. It's here. You've seen it. You just don't know what it is. So why don't you do it right now? Can you imagine it? Then you can have it. Can you see yourself pure? You were and have been. It serves the earth, dear human being, for you to live longer than you think you're going to live. We need your light. So why not do it now? In this moment, if you've come for a healing, you're glowing. Right now you're glowing. Let all of those in the room join in compassionate consciousness right now in a quantum state that is entangled with all here. Sending the compassion of healing to the ones who need it without knowing their faces or their names. And the old souls who are here can do that. And so I ask you to. You don't know their names. You don't know who they are. And those of you who have come for the healing who know who you are, receive from the others around you. For their fields are overlapping with yours. And that means you're all in the form of a quantum state which is entangled all one, one all.
It's beautiful. Someday you'll see what the ceremony of human beings together can do when you all walk out pure. When you can go to a meeting for half a day and come out younger than you went in. And you'll start to see all of what I have said today is accurate and true against all logic. But well within the purview of the love of God. We leave this place and yet we don't. There'll never be a meeting like this again with this exact number of souls, with the names that you have, with the akash you have. And so it's a unique meeting, much like you are unique. Go from this place different than you came. And know that crying does not exist in this human being sitting on this stage. Crying exists in the soup which is God which walks out with you if you choose if you choose and so it is Thank you everybody. Thank you to the gorgeous soup that we make up. So lovely to have you all with us. And just before we do say farewell for the short time we've spent this time, as the gypsies say, let's show drum, travel safe. But before that, there's a couple of things I'd like to say and I'll keep it short. To those who are sitting before you, our friends here, what wisdom they've shared all weekend. I, I really believe as Kryan asked us, or has just invited us actually to leave different to how we arrived. My sense is that we will leave greatly dif difference and I'm sure, different and I'm sure you would all agree. Thank you for, for your attention, for your focus, for your openness. We've all commented all weekend about how, how you're just sucking it all in. So thank you for that. We've got part of Samyana here. And I'd really like to thank the other part as well. But to Maya <laughs> and Pratika, thank you for everything you've brought to us. It was delightful having them, wasn't it? Thank you, Samana. <laughs> to Jorge Bianchi, thank you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Up. Peggy Phoenix Dobro. Also, very, very quietly, right down in the far corner is Peggy's silent partner, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, for everything you've brought to this weekend. And to her team of, of EMFers up the front, thank you as well. To Lee Carroll, thank you for coming back to Australia. And I think I can safely say to the one who brings us all together, Cryon, thank you. One more little tiny announcement. I know I've given them all weekend. I would like to say... <laughs> weekends like this don't happen magically, and they do, and it certainly wouldn't have happened without my crew, and I would just like to absolutely acknowledge them from my heart. And they divine. They're crazy, but we're all a little bit crazy. Beck, Bran, Karen, Danny, Heather and Lynn our photographer, Michelle. Did I get everyone? Thank you. Thank you so much for all you've done. Go safely, friends, and thank you. And hopefully we can do this all again in the not too distant future, and we'll keep you posted. Thank you so much.
for those who are coming to Jorge's event tonight, literally across the road, we'll be there from, a, if you could just come around 6.15, we're starting at 6.30. So you've got, you know, 45 minutes to grab a cup of coffee and a sandwich if you'd like to. So in Latrobe Street at the State Library. Thanks, folks. <laughs>